And it's so wonderful to see that the children in our church are leading services. And it's so glad that they are rising up to the occasion and are standing up to the expectation of the church to be good leaders to lead the church. Thank you children for that. Coming to that as we celebrate the children and all of us as parents know how precious they are. It reminds me of a small story. Uh, uh, in about a few years back, down in the USA in an apartment, normally people on the same floor know each other. And one of the apartment was vacant and nobody was not seen by the neighbors there. And suddenly, one of the neighbor found strange noises coming out of that apartment. Hare, all these days this was so quiet and nobody was there and suddenly I hear some noise from this apartment and she called the police. Especially in USA where people don't touch the doors or knock on the doors and see. They called the police. The police came in and inquired who called, what is it, what is happening and they broke open that particular door. To their surprise, they saw three little children in the house, which was not occupied before, but I don't know when it was occupied, but to the surprise of the policemen, they saw three little children in that particular apartment. Uh, they were in a little shabby condition. On inquiry, the police came to know that these three little children aged 10, 6 and 3 were abandoned by their parents in that apartment. Their parents were drug dealers. They thought they could dispense with their children by leaving them there in the apartment. And thanks to the neighbor who was so attentive, heard some noises and called the police. But out of those group of policemen who came down there, one person took pity on them. He took, as the police took them to the police station and cared for them, looked after them. One police personnel took pity on them and took care of them so very well. And he was so concerned that he took them to his house to be cared for. And in about two years, he adopted them. See, children are not things that we can dispose of, where we can discard them. They are very precious. Children are a blessing from God. They are not a burden to us. Every child is an heritage that God has given us as parents. They are a gift that God gives us. When I say how important a child is, ask a parent who doesn't have a child, they know how important a child is. They are a gift. They are a reward, they are a blessing. And those that have a few children in their family, right from their young age, they, uh, as they grow up, they become like arrows to that family. Arrows in their hands, like the extension of the family, you can do things for them. And we as parents are blessed that God entrusted such beautiful children to our care. And each and every child that is present here, I thank you for being the little children that you are to the parents. In Psalms 127 verse 3 and 4, the psalmist writes, writes, Children are a heritage from the Lord, an offspring, a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Imagine an Imagine a, wa a warrior going to war without arrows in his case. What would he fight? Nothing. He can't take out his arrows and fight. But children are like the arrows of, for a warrior that are there in the case. We as parents, when we look around, we can see that the world is developing very fast around us in all aspects in medicine, 
in education, in technology, in science. And we as parents are not able to spend that much time with our children as much as we want to or as much as we need to. Our work, traveling time, traffic, our tiredness when we come back home, our entertainment, television, internet. So many things are taking up our time and we are not able to spend that much time with our children to help them out. Literally, children are competing for our attention, the attention of parents. This reminds me of another example. In this developed world, now the culture has become work from home. And I imagine a father sitting at his desk and working and the child has drew, has drawn a, draw, uh, drew a nice beautiful picture which he wants to show a father. This little girl comes to the father when he's working seriously and taps on her dad's and ask her, Dad, look at this, I drew something, look at this. The dad says, go away, go away, go away. I'm working right now, go away, go away. I'm at work, don't disturb me. She goes off. The second time she comes, she's so persistent that she wants to show her dad what she has drawn and what she's written on that particular piece of paper. The second time, after some time, she comes and taps on her dad, 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 ah yes, ah, Dad, see what I've drawn. No, 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 go away, without even looking at her, go away. You know I'm working, you know how much this pays me? This pays me so much so that I can take care of you and the family. Go away, go away, go away and he pushes off her off. That little child being so persistent understood what was uh, happening and what her dad was saying, you know, it pays me so much. And maybe she has a habit of saving some money in her kitty bank, goes to her kitty bank, wherever she placed it, brings that with whatever she has, comes to her dad and says, <coughs> Is this money enough? Dad, to get your attention. You understand? Uh, what I'm trying to say. Children are seeking our attention so much and the world that we are living in is constantly making us so busy that we are not able to give our attention to the children. If we as parents are not able to spend time to meet uh, the simple joys of our children as parents, do you think that we would be doing what the Lord wants us to do with our children? Referring to that example of no time and a busy schedule. Our job as parents is to ensure that they are trained in the ways of the Lord. I hope all the parents agree. As we celebrate our children, I want to use this opportunity to encourage all parents to consciously train their children in the statues and the ways of the Lord. I am sure our parents are doing it, but are we doing it to the fullest? The Lord says in Genesis chapter 18 verse 19 concerning Abraham, the Lord had so much confidence in Abraham, he said, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they should keep the ways of the Lord to do justice and judgment. This is what the Lord has said concerning Abraham. Though so much of faith he had in Abraham that after Abraham he would make sure that he would command his children and his household to keep God's ways, his judgments and do justice. That much of confidence that Abraham had on, that God had on Abraham. Our children and we 
are exposed to the world constantly, 24 7, 365 days. Children nowadays have access to round the clock television, TV, satellite, internet, all kinds of video games. All these are pumped up into a child's mind. I was recently watching with Nathan, he likes to watch Transformers. All that I can see from my perspective is kill, shoot, kill, shoot, kill, shoot. That's it. Most of the games are there. The soldier has a gun, kill, shoot. Even the toys that are there in the market, guns, shoot, knife, guns, all kinds of modern weaponry. Even the heroes that are there are the ones who destroy the enemies according to them. All these are there. What, we are, what they are imbibing in the children is to destroy the other person. Very seldom we see that there are games that help them show more love, more concern to others. Very seldom, very rarely we see. And children don't like to play such games. They like action. You ask the children, who are the action heroes, they'll be telling a lot of things. <laughs> one will say Captain America, one will say Batman, what not names they have nowadays. <laughs> All these that are being, that we as parents and children are exposed to daily, are made sure that Satan brings in all kinds of pressures on us in such a way that, you know, our focus is diverted from God and His ways. If it is diverting us as parents, definitely it will divert children's minds. The stuff that is available for children and what they watch on a daily basis constantly, it will help them shape their thoughts, beliefs and intellect and their lifestyle. And in this situation, it becomes much more difficult for us as parents to lead them into the Lord's way. I hope the parents agree about this. Let's see what the Bible tells about the little children and about children. Children are an heritage from the Lord, Psalms 127, 3 to 5. They are the fruit of the womb. In the Bible, in Jeremiah, it says, I know you before you were formed. I have consecrated you. I know who you are, when you are going to be, to whom you are going to be born. God knows each and every person that is born. They are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward to the parents from the Lord. And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 10, this is what I like so much. When Jesus was brought little children to be prayed about. And when he spoke about the parable of the lost sheep, he said, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven... Their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. This tells me that every child has an angel assigned to them. And this angel intercedes on behalf of the child to the Father in heaven. How important and how precious our children are. And they look and see the face of my Father who is in heaven. So every child that is here, understand that you have an angel that God has placed for you. And you can very boldly go to the throne of God asking for help. Just as Nathan read in Psalms 46, 1, it says, 
God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble, always there, ever-present help in trouble. Children, don't forget that, that God is always there for you. When I say ever-present, repeat always there. Children, when I say ever-present, what do you have to say? Always there. When you are trouble, when you are in trouble, and God is always there in a trouble. When you are feeling lonely, God is always there. When you are sad, when you are afraid, so remember that God is always there with you in all your troubles and all your happiness. Little children, parents with little children were bringing their little children to Jesus Christ. And the disciples around Jesus Christ were stopping them from coming to Jesus Christ. But see what Jesus has done. Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Jesus has invited the child to come to him and asked his disciples not to stop them. Why? Because Jesus understood the beauty that is there in the children, the innocence that they have, the love, the pure love that they have, the humbleness to listen and do what is told. God recognized such beautiful traits in children and he rebuked the disciples not to stop parents with the little children or little children to come to Jesus to be blessed. And then at another time when the disciples were all together and they were arguing among themselves, in Matthew 18 verse 1 to 3 when they are arguing, who will be the greatest among the disciples? And they have come to Jesus Christ and asked him the same question, who would be the greatest in the kingdom? What did Jesus do? He picked up a little children and said in Matthew chapter 18 verse 1 to 3, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Unless you turn and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Children are very precious. Their characteristics as a child are so beautiful. As parents we remember, or as little children or grown up children, we enjoy the time that we spend with little children. If you ask Praveen and Claire, uh, Praveen and Pearl, how much they enjoy little Claire, all the naughty things that she's doing, trying to talk, trying to run, trying to uh, imitate them, so wonderful it is to see. Not only to their parents' joy, when we as children go about other children and pick them up and see and talk to them, so much of joy that we get playing around them. Parents, are you feeling a bit jealous that children are so important in God's sight? There's good news. We also, who have believed in Jesus Christ, who our believers are called children of God through faith. John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13, it says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but God, born of God. We who believe in Jesus Christ and God, God gives us the opportunity to be called His children, not children of our parents, but God's children, but through faith. So, our belief in Jesus Christ, as said in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, as Paul said, so in Christ Jesus, you are all 
children of God through faith. Yes, we are all children of God, not only the little ones, each and every one of us. In His great love, God the, Fa God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, in their love, embraced each and every one of us into them through their love towards us. So loving our Father is, so loving Jesus Christ is. And as we believe and are baptized, God definitely blesses us with His Spirit that dwells in our heart. And this spirit that is in us, which has been given to us by God, works in us in such a way that it will tell your heart that the things that you are doing, certain things that you are doing are not right. It prompts you, it shows you where you are going wrong. It speaks very softly. It tells you, it reminds you that certain things that a person is doing which are not right according to God and it helps, this spirit helps us in understanding that what we are doing is wrong and brings about the thought of repentance in us. brings about the consciousness in our minds that certain things that we are doing are wrong, whatever it might be. Maybe, it, maybe it's a lie, maybe it's a habit, maybe it's a regular thing that we are doing, but if it is not according to God's will and plan, we understand that God, through His Spirit, helps our heart to realize what we are doing is wrong and gives us the thought of repenting in our actions, in our thoughts and in our ways. And the Spirit of God that is within us helps us to correct our action. The Spirit and the scriptures that are there in the Bible helps us as individuals who believe to correct our ways so that we are walking according to the scriptures that have been instructed in the Bible. And then we begin to follow what God has told us. God loved to see that all His children are repentant, are corrected, follow, believe in what He says and depend on Him completely for His guidance. Trust Him. When it comes to trust, I remember one incident. As a church, we are all growing, went on a picnic to a swimming pool close to Mrs. Zachariah's house. Jessica was quite small, she was just one year or little above one year, not even two. And all the men got into the pool and they were playing and calling children into the pool. Jessica was just changed and her mom was bringing her to the pool. Looking at that, I said, Jessica, come. And immediately she took, left her mom's hand and she came close to the pool and jumped into the water. She didn't even think that it was dangerous, it was deep or anything, it was just small. And I was not ready to hold her <laughs> at that point. She had that trust and faith just to jump when I called her, Jessica, come. See, children have that beautiful quality of trust and they listen to instructions. And as the leading of God, Spirit comes into our lives and as we grow and we are bearing fruit, we as parents 
surely demonstrate or imitate what God has done for us. If God has shown us love, we try to show our love towards others. If God has shown us kindness and we are growing in that, we will be kind to others. We imitate. Talking about imitation, little children always imitate their parents. They see them so much in their day-to-day -day lives. And especially girls, they like to, you know, group around, let's play house-house, uh, they take out all their cooking toys and then they, they, they imitate like their moms, how their mom does and how their mom serves tea in a cup to their dad and how she cooks, you know, and they do all those actions to their parents. Don't you remember? As parents you remember so many children coming to us with small, small cups and saucers and trying to give. It's so lovely to see how little children imitate us as parents. And recently I saw on a WhatsApp update status about little uh, children, how they imitate. I saw Claire with lovely lip, red lipstick on her face. So wonderful to see her naughty face. Yeah? She took the lead, red lipstick, her mommy bought it and you know, she would have seen her mom somewhere putting the lipstick on her lips and you know, she tried to imitate her at the end and it's all, hands are all wet, dresses all red and all. But see, children love to imitate parents and they show that love to each other. Just like God loves to see we as believers repent, correct, follow, believe, depend, trust, imitate and love. Children also trust our parents, us as parents. They believe in us, they depend on us, they imitate us as parents. Our responsibility as parents to our children is that we need to guide our children in the right direction. Children need direction, especially in this developed world. If we are not directing them into the right way, I am sure they will go into the wrong way because the world is so very influenced by Satan and its ways, they will not be walking in the right way as God wants us to. So our responsibility as parents is to lead our children into the right way. Children need direction. One legacy we owe our children apart from education is to ensure that they are trained in the ways of the Lord knowing that when they grow they will not depart from them. And this is a direct command, an order given by Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. It says fathers here, but fathers and mothers too, do not provoke your children, but bring them up in the discipline and instructions of the Lord, especially to the teens, instructing the teens, disciplining the teens and young adults. That is our primary responsibility as a parent. If we as parents allow our children to grow up without the knowledge of God, we serve not only their ignorance and unbelief but also their destruction. If we as parents allow our children to grow without the knowledge of God, then we are looking at their destruction. Make sure that we are training our children well. It is our solemn duty as parents to teach our children about God and His saving work. We who have experienced the love of God 
the forgiveness of our father, the indwelling of the spirit within us, the joy of redemption, when we have experienced this saving work in our own lives, it is our responsibility as parents to teach our children about this. When we do this, the next generation will know God and be saved. Give all opportunity possible for children to be introduced to faith in Jesus Christ. Children normally will respond to love of Jesus even though they may not understand all the implications of their faith. I especially like to thank the Sunday school teachers who are doing this wonderful job of enlightening our children about God and His ways. And really it is like planting a seed in their minds. It's helping them grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Children need gentle shepherding care that is not intimidating or threatening. Most of the time as parents we tend to correct our children in a very harsh way. But children are gentle, children are different, they are not like adults. We can't treat children the way we treat adults. They need a gentle care. They should not feel that they are threatened or they should not feel that they are overpowered by parents. But children listen to a gentle tone of voice, they understand. I recently understood about it, dealing with Nathan. It was quite different dealing with Jessica and quite different dealing with Nathan. <laughs> My wife tells me Nathan has a different personality and Jesse has a different personality. So children need a gentle voice. Sometimes children need not be told anything, just non-verbal actions make a lot of decisions for them. For example, we are in a small gathering and the children is talking quite a bit and not allowing the parents to talk something important. Suddenly the eye contact is there with the, with the child and the parent says, the child understood, isn't it? They become quiet. And they are at a place asking for a new toy or something, you know. Dad says, then they look to their mom. I'm sure you know this non verbal things communicate a lot to the children. Children need a thoughtful shepherd to lead and feed and nurture them to maturity. They are also growing. Let them take the decisions that they have to take, make the decisions that they have to make. They are responsible for the decisions that they make. We tell them, we instruct them, but give the opportunity for the child to take and make the decisions. And we will show them what this, the decision of yes, what it is, the decision of no, what it means. So, give the opportunity to a child. As parents, ask the Lord for wisdom in navigating our children through the process of placing their faith, their commitment and love for Jesus, their Lord and Savior. We should ask God and pray about our children, asking us that God will grant us the wisdom to guide our children so that we will lead them into the faith that they will be committed in their love towards God to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Children are able to make responsible decisions for themselves. I'm sure once they come 
from class Y and above, they know how to make decisions for themselves. And we as parents need to honor them. Sometimes parents override their decision and say no, we have to respect them. Do not be frustrated as parents, do not be frustrated or discouraged. If chil our children are not responding faster than others, sometimes some children grasp things like this, yes and they go few steps ahead. Some children are slow to understand. Do not be frustrated as children, as parents. Children have their own way of learning things, developing their knowledge and growing in the faith of Jesus Christ. Sometimes as parents we always do the mistake of comparing. Look at that child, they already learned. They already know to sing. You are not even reading, especially in the faith. Teach them very gently, kindly and ask God to help you. God uses the faith of parents as a catalyst for planting the faith in our children. Children are good imitators, they see how parents pray, they see how parents read the Bible, they see how they are talking, they see how parents are talking in the house, how parents are dealing with each other in their relationships. Sometimes certain view, words used in conversation unknowingly are caught up by children so fast that they repeat it with each other, which is not right. Allow children to experience your love. As parents we experience the love of God, the joy of our Father, the peace, all these attributes that the Spirit gives us of patience, of kindness, of gentleness, of goodness, of self-control that God gives us through His Spirit as we are growing. Allow children to experience this kind of joy, this peace, this patience, this self-control that we need to have as parents so that children look through us to Jesus. Let them enjoy these beautiful gifts in their parents and we as parents have the ability to share these gifts that God has given with our children. Children form opinions about Jesus in their early childhood when they are just growing up to be teens or teens. It is by their own experience about Jesus through the Sunday school and through our teachings and it is also by the people that they interact with in church and in house. How people are dealing with each other, how they are talking, what are the characteristics that are there, they, very, they are very smart, they grasp like this. Their opinions are formed. But when we talk about Jesus to them, let's make sure that the children have the right opinion. Their initial experience should be good. Children, children normally don't think differently. They need a person who they can see Jesus through and that is we as parents. They want to see Jesus through our eyes through the eyes of the parents. So let's be good parents and teach them what. Children are capable of developing deep impression about the Lord that remain with them for the rest of their life. In whatever they learn about God in their childhood, it, it imbibes a deep impression in their hearts which is carried through the rest of their life. 
as parents let's ask god for his wisdom patience to model the behavior of our kids so that it is acceptable in god's sight just as the little children who were brought to jesus made such a big impact where jesus said to such belongs the kingdom of god that humble nature that is in a child let's ask god that god gives us as parents that kind of nature to be careful with our children so that we will bring them up in the teachings of our lord i think most of us have heard when people talk especially elders they appreciate an elderly person when they see their children are brought up very well i have heard a person say you brought your children up very well in the lord and they now have their own children whom they are bringing up and it is so encouraging to hear such kind of words not only to the parent who has brought their children up but also to the person who is hearing it is like an example and all the more as parents apostle john in john chapter 3rd john in verse 4 it says i have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth may god bless us all with such beautiful experiences in our lives that we spend more time with children bring them up in the, in the lord and for the children i'd like to leave you with two points when you are afraid put your trust in god psalms 56 verse 3 when you are afraid put your trust in god in psalms 46 one it says god is our refuge and strength and ever present help in our trouble like an angel that is there for you you can approach god any time pray and god will intercede for you and there's a command directly for the children in ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth if you honor your parents trust in the lord god is definitely going to bless you all children may god bless all of us that we will bring up our children in the fear of the lord thank you